Hi everybody, I'm just on my way out to the garage to check on Mike because I was busy grouting one of my projects this morning and you just can't stop in the middle of that. So here's one of my latest projects. So can I just tell you, Mike has been either working or had some obligation every day since our last video, which means now we have one day to work on the deck and one day to edit video in order to get a video out on time. Let's go see how he's doing. Well, here's my cutlass for the first panel. So this is what I made here. So what this allows me to do is put wood across or metal across here and then turn the corner and come back this way. And then I made these so I can adjust them in and out because I'm gonna have different sizes of intrusions into this space uh, to accommodate both the uh, skylight and then on the one in the back, of the bus we have the skylight and then we have the max air fan right next to it and so i have to i think it's it's pretty big so i have to leave an opening for those so that's what that's for now i can cut the pieces that bridge here come this way go back that and then bridge that last little gap right there How's it going? Pretty good. Just about Looks so far so good. Almost done with the frame here. Just wait, are you welding yet or just setting it up yet? It's just set up right now. Okay, that's See, what I, I built thought. this frame here to hold this and it's adjustable for the different intrusions we're gonna have into the frame. Oh, okay. So I can pull this out and move it around. Whether skylight, max fan, whatever yeah, is in the so. way. God, this looks huge in here. And this is just one quarter of the deck. Babe, I think you're an overachiever. <laughs> <laughs> I only have to do it once. It's not so bad. <clears throat> GoPro, stop recording. That's been recorded for like 20 minutes. But this is really nice, having this set up. Yeah, you know, so you don't have to kneel down on the floor for every set like yeah. you used to. That will accommodate the skylight right there. And that one came out a quarter inch short, but that's not gonna work. Right? Another one. Okay. There we go, wasting metal. So I look at my reflection instead.
This is too hard. Babe, have you remeasured everything? Like, measure thrice, weld once? For sure. Like, because you just, like, caught a mistake on this one. Have you remeasured all of them? Just to make sure? Put it, move that one out of the way. Okay. Don't you need something to clamp the metal together so it doesn't spread apart? Something horrible happened here. It's bigger? No, it got small on this side by an inch. Wow. We're never gonna finish this shit. I'm done. done. Like over it. Like it's super short. How did I cut these things? Like, was I fing on drugs at the time? Like, I cut them right. I don't know what the f happened. Those measurements were exactly right. The cuts are exactly right. And then I weld them and they're a half inch short. How do I lose a half inch in a weld? And we just waste an entire piece of metal, so now we're totally short. Let me think here. What are those measurements? God, my math is right though. We haven't resolved that issue with the deck yet, but Mike had to go back to work today. And I am supposed to be editing, <laughs> just working on one little project first. Um, but I probably won't have time to make any progress on the mosaic either. However, 
Mike's schedule has shifted to where tomorrow he starts four days off. He will have time to take care of the issues with the rack, the deck, and probably make a lot more progress on something new and exciting. So I'm sorry I haven't made any progress on the mosaic either. And I just have to say, oh my gosh, thank you guys so much. Your outpouring of support was phenomenal. I can't tell you how terrified I was <laughs> to expose what I was planning to do in that crazy shower mosaic. And I know I had a lot of questions. I'm sorry I haven't been able to answer them yet. I will get to them. But in the meantime, I did find some footage I recorded a long time ago and never used about a little bit about my process of the tools I use and how I break the plates to use in a mosaic. So I thought I would add some of that onto the end. Some of you might not be interested, but it's there for those of you who are curious as to how this works starting to see what it's going to look like. And you'll probably see it in the Etsy store soon. Take care, you guys, and we'll see you next week. All right, I guess if I was going to be helpful, I would tell you how I'm doing what I'm doing and why I'm doing what I'm doing. I put a towel on my lap and have a box for trash in front of me so that as I break the plates, that's what ends up on the towel when I'm breaking plates. And I just dump it into the box with the rest of the pieces. These are the waste pieces that I don't use, like the little rim on the bottom of the plates. Everything I've learned, I've learned on YouTube or just from personal experience from doing what I learned on YouTube. Um, I learned what tools to use on YouTube. I bought them on Amazon. These are some little side bite um, tile nipper pliers. I can't remember what they're called right now, but I'll put it in the description. I also used wheel cutters. Um, I have found out that not all plates break the same. You can't tell and you just won't know the difference. When you first go into thrift stores and start buying plates, you just don't know <laughs> what's going to happen. But I can show you the difference between, if you look at the edge on how this plate broke with really nice, clean, straight edge, compared to, say, how this plate broke. And this isn't like the worst I've ever seen, but you can probably tell that this edge is kind of crumbly. It just doesn't look that nice. Or you can potentially um, get a little grinder and grind off the rough edges and make them look smooth and pretty anyway. So, so I recommend just going into a thrift store and buying stacks of plates really inexpensively and just start practicing like order your tools online or whatever you need to do and just start practicing so you can get a feel for it with your own hands and you can see how different plates break like just see how easily when i put these little side biters on there i get a i push it in almost as far as i can because you get a straighter line to break across that way and Normally I put my glasses on for eye protection. But, um, and that's good enough, they don't have to be perfect. I guess that's probably the three main things. You can learn everything you need to know on YouTube. You can find the tools you need and um, just going to thrift stores and buying plates and practicing because they're not all gonna break the same is really my biggest advice for this. And then the next advice for that, this is really important because it just, makes your plate break so funky if you don't do it in this order. You want to do um, like pie shaped pieces first before you start breaking it into smaller bits. So get a good bite in there and break it in half first. It doesn't matter if it doesn't go in half. You just want to get it into basically quarters and then you're gonna go from quarters into eighths. So take each one of these and break it like a piece of pie. Again, you're always wanting to go with that wedge triangle shape until you've got at least your eight pieces of plate. Okay, there you go. 
and then you can chip away the middle pieces then you can chip away this little ridge here and then you can do whatever you want with this outside edge but if you have a piece this big and you just start trying to make like if you instead of going to the middle here and making two more pie pieces out of this if you just try to break it off the edge right here and get a nice straight piece look what's going to happen you just can't get it you can't get it to go in a straight line unless you go for the middle oh, it's too late now i've already i've already jacked that one up see this is what i'm telling you you have to go for your pie pie shape or it starts just ruining your pieces and you just you can't make it do what you want it to do anymore and then once you've got these little pie piece shapes now there's a whole bunch of flat real estate in here in the middle that is your best best whoops that one broke weird your best pieces of plate you want to take out your little piece of the middle first i'm going to break this one this way there's that nice neat little piece then that whole piece just comes off nice and neat most of the time that's trash now i can break it in that pie kind of you know from the outside edge towards the middle again and get it to break straight again and now i can decide what kind of pieces if i'm looking for like a bigger square piece I can just kind of, you know, make it a square. Ta-da! That was another subscriber. Um, or I can go for, I can make it even thinner again if I'm needing small pieces for something. I can go smaller again and just make it into small squares, rectangles, whatever it is I need. Oh, also another tip. I find that my hands, probably because my hands are small, my hands tend to slide up on my pliers, but the more they slide up, the, the harder you have to squeeze to make them break. So I have to make sure to move my hands back to the very back, very end of my pliers um, to make sure my hands don't get tired. Really, I guess, I guess one of the things I should say about the difference in thickness between the thicker plates and the thinner plates the really cool thing about um, grout is that you can use two pieces that aren't exactly the same thickness right next to each other and the grout will just even itself out from the higher edge to the lower edge so it doesn't matter you don't have to be really perfectionist about it which is was really hard for me it's becoming easier and easier as i go to um get over perfectionism and just have more fun with things yeah, yeah, yeah.